And thank you for your, your giving on that. I'm just telling you, you're gonna come back next week and you're gonna be like, whoa. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was, whoa. I saw the stuff backstage, I'm like, whoa. I'm so excited. Today we're talking about a new series called Frequency. Frequency. Uh, you know, you ever have a, a, a time when you go to talk to somebody and there's a language or communication barrier? Anybody? Yesterday, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Just my color. <laughs> Yesterday, I, uh, I sent somebody an Uber Eats. And, you know, I was like, you know, I want to bless you. Here you go. And I get a call from somebody who didn't speak a, a lick of English. I'm like, do you speak a Spanish? Was what he said. That's all he could say to me. And I can speak some Spanish, but not that fast. And... and not at that time. I don't know. I, just, I couldn't understand what the guy's saying. And then, so I'm like, okay, La Porta. Like, La Porta. <laughs> like, ding dong. Like, I'm trying, to, like, I'm trying to say. And there was such a communication barrier. Because we had two different people who really had two different languages. Many times in our life, we have, we have uh, communication issues because we're not listening well or somebody's not speaking well. As I get older, if somebody talks low like this, I can't understand what they're saying. Like, stop mumbling. I have to put on the, the closed captions now when I watch TV. Cause I, because, you know, you can say that I read a lot <laughs> if you watch a lot of TV. But anyway, but it's, I, I need to understand because if there's a communication barrier, I won't be able to hear or pick up what they're putting down. And so today, I want to teach us how to hear from God. It's going to be a four-week series. In here, we're going to be talking about how to hear from God, how to pray, different types of prayer we can do. Things are going to stop us from hearing from God. And the last week, I'm so excited. This is what to do when God is silent. Has anybody ever prayed and had a silent heaven? And you're going, what in the world's going on? I'm going to explain it to you. That's going to be week four. And so you want to be a part of this series. Bring your friends. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who are in the world who are looking and saying, I want to know how I can talk to God. I want to know how I can hear God. And I want to know that we can do this together. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So do you notice there, are, that's the, the, tr the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. But there are three words I want to pull out of here besides that, three phrases. Number one, the love of God. The love of God. May the love of God. That word love is the word agape in the original language, Greek. Agape. And what agape means is an uh, affection or a benevolence. It's a love that is unending and without condition. That's the kind of love that God has for us. Thank God. The next line in there, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace, that word grace is the word charis, where you hear the word charismatic or charisma, right? Or, or um, other words, I was gonna say a, something that students say now, but it doesn't matter. So charis means... The riz, it's the riz, that's what it means, y'all. And so, charis means favor, it means, the, it means grace, it means the kindness of God that he shows towards people. In other words, it is, it, it's love in action. So, hear what we're talking about. This is what Paul's praying over you. May you have the unending love of God, the, the communication, the benevolence of him, with the favor and the kindness towards his people, love and action, and then, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The word fellowship there is the word koinonia, and that means a community, an intimacy with the Lord. So if we were to rewrite this using the words that were spoken, it would say, say something like this. Because of God's unending love, he shows kindness and favor towards people because he desires community and intimacy with his people. I'm gonna say that again, because when I got this, it blessed the socks off of me. I really am not wearing any socks right now. <laughs> because of God's unending love, 
he shows kindness and favor towards his people because he desires community and intimacy with his people. Ooh, what, what's, yeah, I'm about to get preaching on this one, y'all. All right, I gotta teach, gotta teach, gotta teach. That is God's original plan. Filling in the blanks, first one, God's plan. God's original plan. How do I know this? The Bible says in Genesis chapter three, verses eight and nine, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord among the trees in the garden. But the Lord called to the man, where are you? Okay. Now, when you're interpreting the Bible, there is something called the law of first mention. So you go back to where it's first mentioned in the Bible to figure out what it is really talking about. And so in the law of first mention, God's, it shows us here that this is what God's purest form of communication was, that he was walking in the garden, they wanted to talk to him, and they heard the voice of the Lord. Think about this. They heard the voice of the Lord. The, 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 the word there that... Um, the sound of the Lord God as he was walking. The wife heard the sound of the Lord God. That word sound actually is a word, it's a bad translation, it's the word frivolity, fun. They heard the sound of God, like, hey, what's going on? Like, God does not stick in the mud. How do I know this? Because Jesus Christ himself, they had a bunch of kids hanging around them. And kids don't hang around with stinkers. They want to hang around people who are fun. That's why my nephew, my, my grandson loves to go to his uncle, Uncle Cameron. Hey, Cameron! It's the coolest thing in the world. I love seeing it because Cameron is super fun. And when I think about how fun Cameron is, I think about God because God is fun to be, while he's God and while we honor him, don't hear, don't let me hear you say that. But at the same time, he's also fun to be around. He is honorable. I, my kids honor me, but I'm also fun to be around. Have you had a, a person in your life that you don't like being around? I don't care what a person I don't like to be around says. Because I don't want to listen to them. I don't want to be near them. If they're like negative Nancy, nope. I got, ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have time for that in my life. I want to be around people, right? I want to... I wanna be the person who's uplifting people. I wanna have frivolity, I wanna hear. And so when we hear, think about God, we think, oh, he's such a big God and he doesn't wanna to talk to me and that's nowhere close to what God is saying. God is saying, I wanna spend every moment with you. He's not mad, it's not in God's nature. Look at Leviticus chapter 26. How do I know that? Leviticus 26. I will live among you and I will not despise you. I will walk among you and you will, I will be your God and you will be my people. That's not a God who's up in heaven far away. Let me read that again. I will live among you. He's not a distant God. He is here right now. The word declares where two or more are gathered in his name, he's right here with us. Jesus is in the room right now. I saw him come in. <laughs> All hail King Jesus. He says, I will live among you. And I will not despise you. I'll walk among you. I'll be your God. And you'll be my people. Guys, listen, this isn't just an interaction. This isn't me just checking a box. This is a true relationship. And that's a real problem with people who are religious. Because religion is just checking a box. I go on a date night every week with my wife, every week. Why? Because after Jesus, she's the most important thing in my life. And what I did to get her, I gotta keep on doing to keep her. Thank you. That is true. Now if I just go on the date to go on the date to check a box, that's not gonna do anything for our relationship. But if I'm on that date and it's interaction and I'm talking with her and we're hanging out together and we're just 
That is the, the view, that's the idea of the relationship that God wants to have with you. We talk about knowing God. We want to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. To know God is that kind of relationship where he can look me in the eyes and go, what are you thinking, son? Right? If you have a good relationship, people can say things to you. That's why small groups are so important. Small groups, people can call you on stuff. Like, man, that's not right. That's not right. They can also say, you're doing a great job. They can lift you up. They can protect you. They can guide you. That's why small groups are so important. But listen, the problem that we have is that most of us don't have the relationship with God like you have with your spouse. And the reason is everybody has the same problem, and it's called sin. So you have the plan, you have the problem. That's the next fill in the blank. And the problem is sin. Genesis chapter three. So the Lord God banished them from the garden of Eden and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord stationed mighty cherubim in the east of the garden and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Wow, when I think about a flaming sword, what does that make you think of? It's in the New Testament, I'll get to in just a moment. So what happened, they... they, Adam and Eve were in the garden. At the very center of the garden, there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God said, of all these other trees you can eat, but do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When we eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what we are saying is that I'm gonna decide what is right and what is wrong, not God. See, God said don't do it, but I'm gonna decide whether or not I'm gonna do it. And so, God doesn't want us to be eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He he commanded us not to. He told us that we could eat off any other tree, which includes the tree of life. God wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. That's That's why Jesus came. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, to the fullest, overflowing. That's the kind of God, the life that God wants to give us. But so if I was thinking about the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that represents what, when I say what is right and wrong. The tree of life, I think, represents Christ. And this is the first time in the Bible we talk about life. Because once you eat of the tree of the fruit of life, the fruit of the tree of life, you live forever. When I get Jesus on the inside of me, y'all, listen, I might die in the body, but the moment I close my eyes, I'll open them again, and I'll be breathing heavenly air. I'll see my Savior face to face. That's good news, y'all. That's very good news. So Jesus, the Bible says in the, in the in book of Revelation, there's actually the tree. I've, I've talked about this you know, almost incessantly, but in the, in the tree of life is located in the Garden of Eden, uh, our Garden of Eden, but also in the new Jerusalem and the new earth. And it says it goes from the crystal river from one side to the other, and in its leaves are healing for the nations that bloom every month. Guys, the only thing that can unite our country is not the Democrats, it's not the Republicans, it's not the independents. It's King Jesus. It's King Jesus. That's who our allegiance goes to. That's why you never hear me up here talking politics. Because I want my my prophetic sword to be able to slice the left and the right. I serve King Jesus. I'm his ambassador. It wasn't a donkey that died on the cross and it wasn't an elephant that died on the cross. It was Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. And that's who I'm gonna serve and that's who I'm gonna worship. Amen. Amen. Now that's not saying I don't have views on what I'm seeing, but my views mean nothing. They are garbage compared to my Jesus. I'm gonna serve him. This time, listen, we get all anxious. Anybody getting anxious? The election, my person's gonna win, my person's gonna lose, this person, that person, blah, blah, blah. Chill, just chill, chill. The Bible says the Lord raises up and puts down those who he wants to control. Just chill. Do your civic duty, but chill. Amen, that's a good prophetic word. That was not in my notes. I'm telling you, that's from God for you, for this body, I'm telling you. If you're watching online, chill out. (laughs) Calm down, calm down. Remember the Genesis chapter three, there's a flaming sword that's guarding 
the, you know, the Garden of Eden so they don't go back in. That wasn't God being mean to them. That was God saving them. Because if they ate of that, they would have been stuck in that, that place forever and we had to wipe out uh, mankind again. Or for the first time. But you see what I'm saying? Like he'd have to just like, oh, do over. Let's do it again. Like in Noah, do over. But he protected them and he put the sword out there. That sword, the Bible says, in Hebrews represents the word of God. And so Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 and 13 says, for the word of God is active and powerful. Stop right there. What do you mean, pastor? This is just a book. No, it's not. This is a book to those who don't know Jesus. It is bread. It is life. It is water to me. This is what I, it's like, the Bible says like honey on your lips. That's what the word of God is. But it's also a sword. The Bible says in, in Ephesians, take the word of God, which is a sword. Oh, wow. So what does a sword do? Keep on reading. It's sharper, the Bible, word of God, is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and the spirit, between the joints and the marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Everybody say, tree knowledge of good and evil. Say it with me, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? What I want, what I think is right or wrong, the Bible is separating that from the word of, from, from truth. He's saying, no, no, you have this, you have an intertwining of, of, of uh, um, roots and you need to get those roots away. You need to stay in the tree of life. The problem is we like to swing back and forth. We like to swing back and forth because like I want grace in my life until I want justice for somebody else. Somebody cuts me off. I want justice for them. Where is the cop? We were driving down the road, a car flew by us, and I was already going too fast, and the car flew by me, and I went, whoa, that is way too fast, right? I'm like, where's the cops? Where are the cops when you need one, right? But then, Justice says, that guy's bad, but justice also said, you're speeding too, Jerry. And so I wanna live in grace and I like to live in justice. And so it's, we fight that and the, the, the word of God shows this to us. The Bible says nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. He is the one whom we are accountable. We can't hide it from Jesus. He already knows. He already knows the thought before you think it. Oh, dear God, we're in trouble. Aren't you glad that you have a filter between what goes on in your brain and what comes out of your mouth? Have you noticed that filter doesn't work all the time? Yeah. Every day that you pray to say, God, just renew my filter over my mouth. In Jesus' name. So we see that Jesus here is the word of God. He is the word. How do I know that? John chapter one says, in the beginning, the word was already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. That word in my Bible is capitalized, the W, the logos, the, the word, the word of God. Jesus was with God and Jesus was, is God. He existed with God in the beginning. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of what? Unfaithful, uh, unfailing love and faithfulness. I need to say that again. He is full of unfailing love and faithfulness. So God's desire from the beginning was intimacy, faithfulness, fellowship, community with us. But sin severed that relationship. And we do the same thing. The word says, hey, I read the word, and it says, uh, don't do that. Don't do that. And I still say, no, no, no. I'm gonna make the word say what I want it to say. Listen, deconstruction of the Bible is going to drive me mad. People who read the Bible and say, well, that's not what it really means today. That's old-fashioned, and so I'm going to deconstruct it. And I'm going to make it say what I want it to say. Listen, the Bible has been around for 2,000 years, and it hasn't changed, and it's not going to change for another 2,000 years. It's going to go on forever. The Word of God never changes. Culture might change, but he never does. And so people try to make the Bible say something it doesn't or say, oh, that's old-fashioned, and it doesn't mean that. Hogwash. 
Come on, somebody. This is good preaching. I'm telling you. But the only way back to right relationship with Jesus isn't the good deeds that I do. The only thing, the only way that I can get back to Jesus is through the Holy Spirit. It's because, listen, we choose every day to be like Adam and Eve. It was Adam and Eve who sinned in the first place, and then we are all born with a birth defect called sin. And that sin keeps us away from God. So we see the problem, but how many know that God has a plan, God has a, pro- there was a sin was the problem, but here's number three, there's a provision. Jesus makes a provision. Do you know there are 612 different rules in the, in the Talmud, which is the writings of the Jewish uh, rabbis? And they would write these to, go, uh, to cover the Ten Commandments. The like Ten Commandments, right? You guys know that? No gods, no idols, don't use the Lord's name in vain, keep the Sabbath, honor your father and mother, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't envy. Like those are like the Ten Commandments. And then, so they don't break the commandments or come close to breaking a commandment, the, the, the pastors or the rabbis of those times, they would say, okay, now, on the Sabbath, we don't, we don't break the Sabbath, and so I think a Sabbath journey is so far. And so we're gonna make sure if it's, if it's 1,000 feet, you're gonna only be able to walk 999. And then you can stop, and then you can walk another 999. But just as long as you don't go to 1,000, you're okay. Like these kind of rules. Are you kidding me? Like we have a hard time keeping the 10, right? 312, Jesus comes and say, really, there's only two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. It comes down to those two things. Isn't that cool how he like sums it all up? Makes something, instead of people are struggling under the weight of the law, weight of somebody telling them, hey, follow all this stuff. They said, there's no way I can do this. He says, you're right. How about you love God and you love people? I think somewhere in there I heard that God is love. Jesus came. He says, uh, um, well, let me just ask you this question. How many people here you are a rule follower. Raise your hand real high. I'm a rule follower, real high. I follow the rules. Look at all the rule followers, yep. How many people drive 55 miles per hour when it says 55 miles per hour, you rule keepers? Some people, I don't mind if you drive 55, just don't do it in the left lane. Some of us are like, we, we love the app Waze because the Waze tell us where the police are, right? So I'm going to slow down when it comes to that, right? Don't act like you don't know. So if we're rule followers, when well, people say, well, I, 70, I can't, it's kind of tough. I mean, we, what was that song by uh, Van Halen back in the day? I can't drive 55, right? Or Sammy Hagar, whoever it was. I can't drive 55. So, look, okay, well, I'll go 75 on the interstate instead of 70. It's going to be okay. Listen, when we break one law, the Bible says we're guilty of breaking all the law. What do you mean, break the law? The Bible says that the laws were given to you, to the, the, the authority was given to those over you, i.e. police, military, right, over you, And so they're operating in the authority of God. And when we break their law, break the law, we break his law. Have you ever seen it like that? I knew this guy in Bible college. He only drove the speed limit. And he got harassed and harangued by everybody. Scotty, I can't believe you're doing that. (laughs) How are you doing that? Scotty became a youth pastor while he was a senior in college at a church that had became... That's in the news now, James River uh, in Missouri. A huge church, and he, at the time, was like 300 people because he wanted to always do the right thing. I pray that God would change our hearts that we always do the right thing, the provision. 
The Bible says in Isaiah, all of us have become like one who is unclean. Our righteous acts are like filthy rags. So if I'm guilty of one, I'm guilty of them all. Romans 3, 21, 24. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. Praise God. Because we have all missed it. We have all broken the law one way or the other. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Christ Jesus. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned, we have all fallen short of God's glorious standard, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Amen. I am so thankful. Anybody else thankful for a way called Jesus? Amen. So today, um, some people say, what is my, what's the next step for me? For some people in the room, it's going to be to start a relationship with Christ. For other people, it's going to be to grow a relationship with Christ. One or the other, everyone in this room, to start a relationship with Christ or to grow the relationship with Christ. You see, remember I talked about the religious people where it's an interaction, it's a click, clicking of the button, it's a checking of the box, hitting another thing on your to-do list. When I talk to God, it's just another, I'm just talking to God. Listen, God doesn't want that from you. He doesn't want the sacrifice from you. He wants your heart. He wants relationship with you. Let me say that again. He wants relationship with you. I've heard that before, Pastor. Well, you're gonna hear it again because we need to grow in our faith. We need to stop looking at Jesus as transactional and start looking at him as a relationship. The transaction. I'm gonna believe Jesus Christ so I don't go to hell. I'm gonna believe in Jesus Christ so he brings me healing. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna give in the offering so that I get my, my needs met. That's transactional thinking. Relational is, it all belongs to God. It's all yours, God. I'm gonna live with open hands and open heart. I'm not doing it because I want something from you. I'm doing it because you gave everything for me. And I'm giving my everything back to you. That is relational. So we need to grow our relationships. Some people start, some people grow. If you're living in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you're a believer, swing please over to the tree of life. I can tell in a minute where people are. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're done by your deeds, you're judged by what you do. Tree of life, you're judged by grace, what he did for you. I'd much rather be judged by what he has done for me than what I've actually done. So if you are a Christ follower, stop trying to earn the favor of God. You already have the favor of God. Live in that favor and walk in that relationship with him. So we also need to, last point, if you fill in the blank, we need to, or second to last, prioritize a relationship with Christ. That's how you're gonna do it, get it. The only way that I'm gonna have a great relationship with my wife is if I prioritize a relationship with her. If she doesn't, if she's not on my to-do list, or that's best, sorry. If she's not on my schedule, <laughs> well, <laughs> the students are in the other room, so you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> if she's not on my schedule, it, it's not gonna matter. I need to put what, I schedule what's important in my life. And if she's important, I'm gonna put her on my schedule. If God's important for you, have you put him on your schedule? So if you try to get a morning appointment with Jerry, the answer is no. I already have appointments every morning, all morning. It's with Jesus. And I know what you have to say might be important, but it's nowhere near as important as what he has to say. And so for me, we put you in a little, you know, put you in the afternoon. Because I want to spend time, I put it on my calendar, I'm going to spend time with Jesus. I won't even answer text messages in the morning. Why? Because the morning doesn't belong to me, it belongs to us. And I'm, I, how dare I get in that way? Don't you want a pastor who prays and hears from God? Amen. I mean, I do. <laughs> Otherwise, what are we doing, right? So we need to prioritize that relationship with God. 
You know, two times after the, the day of Pentecost, Jesus was here on the earth, he died, he comes back for, for, uh, for like 40 days, hangs out with his guys, he's like, I'm out. He goes back up, he goes, but when I go, the Holy Spirit's gonna come after you. So 50 days after Pentecost, uh, after uh, Sabbath is the Pentecost. That's why Pente, like Pentagon, means five. So 50 days after Sabbath is the Pentecost where the Holy Spirit shows up in their lives. They receive power and they become witnesses and they go through all the earth. And it was like a scattering of the power of God through the whole known world at that time. He had disciples who went from there and went to India, to China. Did you know that? Do you know that Christianity was in Africa long before it was in Europe? Come on. Oh, it's not a European. No, man. It's an Asian. Like, if you look where the Bible is, like where it's written, that's Asia. That's where it started. Europeans don't have a... a, 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 a what do you call it? Monopoly on Christianity. It came all over the place before us. And so, but there was a time, like from that time, there's only two other times in the Bible where red letters are used. One was when Saul, five years after Pentecost, Saul is riding on his horse and he's persecuting Christians and he's killing them. And a light comes down from heaven and knocks Saul on his can. And he gets blinded by the light. Blinded by the light, right? He can't see. You all thought it. I know you did, right? And he can't see. And he says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And at that day, Saul gave his heart to Jesus. That was red letter number one after Pentecost. Red letter number two is 60 years from Pentecost. John is on the Isle of Patmos. We just did a whole series on Revelation, right? You see, in, in the first three chapters, it's talking to the churches, and the last, very last one, it's him talking about what he's gonna do when he comes back. But in the first three, he says this, verse 20 and 22, and this is from a, a translation or a paraphrase called The Passion, but listen to it. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come in to you and feast with you and you will feast with me. Yes, Lord. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now to the churches. Guys, listen, he's talking to you. You are the church. He's knocking at your door. You know, as you get older, you can't hear the same frequencies. These kids now, they have something called a mosquito tone. You know, <laughs> young guys. Ugh. As we get older, our, our frequencies shrink. That's why high sounds really hurt, right? If I hit a cymbal, it's like, ah, stop, right? And some people, bass really hurts. Man, it just, it hurts your ears because your ears are starting to narrow, there's our frequencies that you have to understand that are going on right now that you can't hear. If I, unless I get the radio out, for those under 40, they used to have these things called radios. <laughs> and they had these dials that would go back and forth and you would find, on the dial, you'd find the right frequency. And if you got the right frequency, you could hear what was going on. But if you didn't have the right frequency, it just sounded like this. <laughs> And today we have her, right? That's what it would sound like as you're going through the radio. May I suggest to you that there's a frequency that God's speaking on always. He's always transmitting and receiving on that frequency. And we have to tune in to the frequency that he has for us. He wants to speak to you. Why? Because I think that, listen, somebody said, well, how come I'm not hearing from God? 1 Peter 3, 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner, as heirs with you in the glorious life, gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. 
gentlemen, maybe the reason God's not hearing your prayers and you're not hearing from him is because you're not treating your wives right. Uh, ladies, maybe you're not hearing from God because you're not treating your husband right. You want to know how to, I, I, this is a, a gross generalization, but if, you, if I want to uh, show some, I think wives love love and men need respect, honor. If you, ladies, if you honor your husband, well, he's not honorable. You know what he said to me? You know how he acts? You know how much he drinks? I can't believe, oh, what kind of guy is this? Just treat him with honor even if he's not honorable because he will rise up to the level of honor that you're gonna give him. And you're gonna find your relationship's gonna change. Gentlemen, love your wives. I believe that when you start working this, if you start working the horizontal relationship correctly, the vertical relationship with God is gonna work correctly. That's what God wants to do. So I think some of us don't hear from God because we're not treating each other right. Some of us, it's because we have unforgiveness in our heart. Matthew chapter five, it's there in your notes, says first go and be reconciled to the person if you know somebody has something against you and then come back and make your offering. We need to walk in forgiveness every day of our life. The other day I was at the gym, yesterday, I was at the gym and I saw somebody at the gym there who caused me great pain once in my life. And immediately, it wasn't hurt that came, it was anger, like a flash of anger. So I'm gonna lay hands on that person suddenly in Jesus' name and then pray for their healing afterwards. That's honestly what I was, was, (laughs) your pastor was dealing with this, you know. My friend, anger, It's like a warning light on a car. When that goes off, there's something deeper wrong. Well, what was the thing going on? Listen, anger, listen, if you don't, if you let it go unchecked, will lead to unforgiveness. When you have unforgiveness in your life, God will not work in your life. If you can't handle this kind of things in your life, you're not gonna handle this kind of thing in your life. He says, this is gonna block you from hearing from me. Oh. And so, what did I do? I walked out, and I said, God, again, I forgive that person. Have I forgiven them? A lot I have. Every time I think about it, every time I see a person, every time, right? I have to always, the Bible said, how many times do you forgive them? Oh, you guys read that verse too, 70 times seven. Times 70, times 70, times 70, times 70. The point is you don't stop forgiving because he doesn't stop forgiving us. Now listen, if you're in an abusive relationship, this is not what we're talking about here. If you're in an abusive relationship, you need to get out of that abusive relationship. Please, don't spend a moment longer in being abused. That's not what I'm, don't hear that, please, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if there's anger going on in your life, because of something, there's a red light going off, there's a warning light, check engine lights popping on your life, you gotta find out why. And don't let unforgiveness get involved. We need to forgive and forgive and forgive because I'm not gonna let that person, you who are watching, I'm not gonna let you stop me from receiving everything God has for my life. I refuse, I refuse. I'm not gonna let them live rent free in my head I'm not gonna let them bring a, something over my heart. There's no way. They're not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm gonna let it go. Let it go. Just let it go, just let it go. Today in this room, there are people who are dealing with unforgiveness. This is from the Holy Spirit, unforgiveness. This is a warning light for you right now. This is your warning light. If I can get to a point where every head is bowed and every eye is closed, there's a time between you and Jesus. There's unforgiveness going on in your heart right now and we need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of the unforgiveness. We gotta make it right, y'all. If we don't get this right, it's gonna mess us up. So if every head bowed, every eye closed, a time of prayer between you, don't miss this moment. Please do not miss this moment. Right now you're dealing with unforgiveness in your heart and you wanna give it to Jesus right now. I don't care who you are, I don't care where you're from. I don't care how long you've been a believer. 
you need to get free of unforgiveness. If that's you, I want you to slip your hand up really, really high so I know I'm praying for you. Yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. We're not drinking this poison any longer. We're gonna be set free. Can you put your hands down? Maybe you're here and I talked about you need to start a relationship with Jesus. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about starting a relationship with Jesus. Today's your day. Before we, we're gonna go to communion in a little bit. Before we go to communion, I wanna give you the opportunity to make it right with God. If you're here today and you wanna make it right with God, you wanna start the relationship with him, you want him to come inside your life. Like the Bible said in, in uh, Revelation 3, he's gonna live on the inside of you and he's gonna dine with you. You're gonna feast together. If that's you, say, Pastor, I wanna start my relationship with Jesus. I want you to lift up your hand real high. Say, Pastor, remember me in this prayer. Go ahead and do it now. Remember me in this prayer, Pastor. If you're watching online, say, I'm saying yes to Jesus. Thank you, ma'am, I see your hand. Anybody else? Maybe you're here today and you say, I am a Christ follower, but I have not grown in my faith for a while. I have felt stagnant. I have felt like I'm maybe going backwards instead of forwards. I need to grow in my faith, grow in my relationship. And you're gonna say, Pastor, when you pray, would you remember me in that prayer? If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand now and say, hey, that's me. Yeah, yeah, it happens, guys, it happens. Happens, thank you, thank you. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Renew a right spirit within me. That's what David said in Psalm 51. Thank you. Can I get you to stand to your feet? We're gonna pray together. Now I wanna pray. I want you to pray along with me if you're we're gonna pray first for the people who are saying yes to Jesus, and then people who are in need forgiveness, I'm gonna pray over you, and then if you're gonna grow with Christ, okay, we're gonna pray in that order. So Father, I thank you for those who are here today and they're saying yes to Jesus, whether they raised their hand or wanted to raise their hand. Father, I pray that as they pray a prayer that says, God, forgive me of my sin. I wanna live right for you. I wanna give my life to you and live 100%. Save me, remove the sin from my life, I'll serve you all my days, in Jesus' name. If those who are dealing with unforgiveness, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that unforgiveness would drop off like weights off of my friends, no longer encumbered by the weight of unforgiveness, by the junk that it brings with it. Father, I pray your power just rests upon them and they walk in healing. And the chains right now that have held them down are dropping off their life right now. Father, those who wanna grow in your faith, they want to grow to know you more. I pray that they would draw close to you and you would show yourself strong on their behalf. God, that they would, they would start uh, getting into uh, your word to see what's going on and you'll change them in Jesus' name. Now, before we go, before the band starts playing, I want to show you.